If you are anything like me, you grew up seeking external validation for all of your accomplishments and to check yourself about if you were making the right decisions in your life, whether that's what kind of sandwich to eat or what clothes to put on. I know many of us have trouble looking inward to validate ourselves. So it's no wonder that when many of us get to the biggest life change that many of us will ever have, becoming parents, that it is really, really hard to look inward. That is why I am so excited to share this conversation with Rachel Sievers. She is a retired mental health professional, a life coach, and a podcast host whose entire goal is to help you to look inward and to discover the answers inside of yourself because that's where they are. Now, of course, many of us do need the support of other people around us to gather the information that helps us make good decisions, like this podcast, like Rachel's podcast, and like my childbirth education course for a great postpartum period. So if you are currently pregnant or you know somebody who is, send them to my website. Go to my website, www.quabinbirthservices.com slash courses, or you can just go to the website and click on courses. And you can sign up. It's still at a 50% discount. And the good news is most of the time, your insurance will fully reimburse. Your insurance will either partially or fully reimburse you for the course. So welcome to the Milk Making Minutes. I'm your host, Lo Nigrash. I'm an international board certified lactation consultant, a doula, and a childbirth educator on a mission to help people understand the barriers that make baby feeding so difficult and to overcome them in a way that feels right for your family. Hi, Rachel. I'm so glad you're back on the Milk Making Minutes. Hi, thanks for having me back. So you already have been on to tell your baby feeding story. So Mm -hmm. I'll have that linked in the show notes so people can go back and listen. And now I'm having you back to talk as a professional because you are a um a retired psychotherapist correct, correct. yes okay yeah. um will you tell me just bef- let's just establish somebody who calls themselves a psychotherapist how does that differ from um somebody who is a therapist or a licensed mental health counselor w- what is the difference there Okay. So therapist and psychotherapist are one in the same. Okay. This person will have at minimum a master's degree and licensed with this, with the board of behavioral sciences with their state, whatever mm-hmm. they live in. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So counselor should have some sort of education, but they don't necessarily have to have education. So really right. anyone could call themselves a counselor or life coach. Mm-hmm. But not all people are actually educated. Mm-hmm. So when you're looking for a counselor or a therapist or life coach, you want to check in on their education status. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I invited, I've had a variety of perinatal mental health professionals and on because this is so intertwined with baby feeding. Mm-hmm. And I know, as far as I know, you do not call yourself a perinatal mental health professional. You see no, no. a variety people, right? This is not my specialty. No. Yes. But the reason I brought you on was because you have this amazing podcast um, called The Answer to Everything. Mm -hmm. And you, you record live sessions with people and then share it so that we can hear and give insight about it. And it's really good. So people should go and listen. Everyone go listen to it. However, as I was listening to your podcast... I thought about all the times that I have been with a client or with a friend or a family member who is in the postpartum period, and I could see that they were struggling, Um, and I wanted to be really supportive for them. And so I thought it would be great to talk to you about how how we can help people in this time to mm-hmm. empathize with them, uh, to understand what they're going through um, 
in a way that doesn't help them feel stigmatized or um, or dismissed and also helping them understand when they might like how can we help them get more help if they're in the that if they're at that point yeah yeah so so when we are with somebody who is in the postpartum period and they express that they are struggling you know i have baby blues i'm crying a lot i'm really anxious about my baby which not all women are going to voice those things right they aren't that's true but they might not say i'm crying a lot but they might say, um, I can't take my eyes off the baby monitor. I have to take it with me everywhere I am. And I look at it constantly and I can't even relax in the evenings. Yeah. And so let's say, let's start with that. Let's say somebody says something like that. How would you guide us as people who aren't mental health professionals to support that person? Okay. I think that the number one thing is understanding. First of all, if, if we can understand and educate ourselves first, that, that will give us a good basis. Uh, women place so much value on their ability to mother. Mm. And in our culture, we are taught that you're no good if you're not a good mother. Mm. You, you got to be pretty and you got to be a good mother. And if you're not mm-hmm. those, then you're worthless. Ge- and I'm being very general, but this is the reality of the system that we are in, Right. So there is a ton of pressure on us, whether we are conscious of that pressure or not, there's a ton of pressure on us to be really good at the whole mothering thing right away. The mother who's struggling in the beginning, there's probably going to be a ton of shame feeling like not, I'm not worth anything to my family or to my baby. I'm a failure because I'm not happy right now or my baby's struggling. So I messed up somehow. The pressure is just so heavy on a new mother. And I think that we all need to be tuned into that and recognize Mm -hmm. that. Now, in addition to that, I think there's a reason why we changed the name of my podcast to The Answer to Everything. Because if you'll notice in my podcast, I'm 100% of the time guiding the person back to them. What's in here? Mm. What's feeling right to you? What's feeling good to you? What feels off to you? What's your anxiety telling you? It's telling you you're not following your authentic self. Like you've got to be true to you, whatever that is. And if Mm. you're not true to you, you will be mentally, emotionally, physically unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Now- as a family or a society trying to support a new mother, we have to honor her true authentic state, whatever that is. Mm. And whatever we can do to nurture the emotions she's feeling right now in this moment, the thoughts that she's having right now in this moment, her experience right now in this moment. We don't need to change it, tell her it should be different. We don't need to Tell her, you know, just suck it up and keep true. No, we need to honor what's going on with her true experience right now. Mm. And I I think that if we approach new mothers with those two things in mind, we can do better. We Mm -hmm. will do better for them. Mm -hmm. So if we have a new mother who's saying, I just, I can't sleep. I can't rest. I have to take the baby monitor everywhere. Most people's response is going to be like, oh, you should just take a shot of brandy and relax. Who cares? It's just one. Or don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Or they're going to be in college one day. So don't even worry about it. This will pass. Oh, just let your baby cry. It's not big. There's always going to be some kind of like, like opinions or suck it up buttercup or get through it somehow instead of gosh, what that must be like for you. Mm. Let me be mm-hmm. here with you in this anxiety. Talk to me, let it out. Talk mm-hmm. to you. I'm here for you. I'll be here with you. We don't I have love to that. fix it. We don't have to teach her anything. We don't have to do anything to solve the problem. Be with her in her experience and let her have the experience. Let her have it and guide mm-hmm. her back to her gut. Mm-hmm. That is so um, 
powerful because I was just thinking when you were talking about how when somebody who is pregnant, I hear this all the time, somebody who is pregnant will talk about how tired they are. And then somebody else will say, oh, just wait until the baby comes. And I always find this so dismissive because the person has just said, I am so tired. I have, I'm a huge, I'm not sleeping well. And then instead of the other person saying, oh my gosh, you must be like, tell me about it. Yeah. They say, well, just you wait. You don't even know what tired is. And right. I Suck it up. You're going to get even more right. tired. Exactly. And I always <laughs> find this to be so dismissive. Um, so I love this idea of just always responding to people with, oh my gosh, that must be hard. Yeah. Tell me but about it. As a collective whole, that means we have to get more uncomfortable being uncomfortable. I have to just let you be tired. I have to just mm -hmm. let you be anxious. And I have mm -hmm. to check myself and realize that makes me really uncomfortable. You being anxious, mm -hmm. you being tired makes me really uncomfortable. You having the baby blues makes me really uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know what? Suck it up, be uncomfortable and just let her have her experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, this idea of unsolicited advice, we all as parents in particular, but everybody really, our, even our kids, they don't really like unsolicited advice. We don't like it, yet we all give it to new parents. And mm -hmm. I think it comes from a good place. We want to help. If somebody expresses difficulty, we think that we can help. Um, but most of the time when somebody is expressing a difficulty, they're not actually wanting you to fix it. They just need a good ear. Right. Yeah. When you give someone unsolicited advice, you're taking away their own power. We are built to create life, give birth, care for life. We're built to do it. We innately, mm -hmm. most of us innately, our bodies will guide us through that. Mm -hmm. And even if it means I have a week of anxiety where I can't stop, you know, listening or checking for my baby's breath, or, that's part of my journey. That is part of me figuring out how to do this. So you don't have to step in and solve people's problems for them. Let the power in them guide them through it. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, I want to take this a little bit further and ask about this i this so i don't know how much time you spend in like mom groups on facebook um i'm in them a bit because there's like these breastfeeding specific groups and mm -hmm. i will answer some evidence based questions sometimes but i'm always very uh i try to give just a little bit of information but also try to relay to people that hey i don't know you i don't know your full situation and part of figuring these things out is going in depth so here's a little bit of information about milk supply and how it works but i can't say specifically how your situation is working because i don't know enough details and also i'm hoping that's a little reminder that all these people on the internet also can't solve your problem. Um, but the thing that this makes me think about is so many people go onto these groups and just ask all these, oh, some of these groups are tens of thousands of people and they're asking all of these strangers about some piece of parenting advice, whether it's breastfeeding or their toddlers having tantrums or wetting the bed, you know, whatever. It, what is it that is drawing people to ask so many strangers for advice that is so varied because everybody has an opinion about how it needs to go. And so they're going to give their answer based on what they did with their family, but that might not work for your family. Right. But what is it that is making people seek out help in this particular way that I have a love-hate relationship with because I'm glad that there's a place where people can reach out. But I mm -hmm. often think when they're reaching out, they're not actually wanting the answer to the question they're asking. They're just like, they don't want actually these people's answers because often you'll see them get defensive in the comments too. Oh, I already tried that. Or So <laughs> what is it about us that is making us do this thing on the internet? Do you know? It in my experience, mm -hmm. in the 
12 years I've been working with people in my profession and even in my personal life, mm -hmm. I see that more often than not, and we can take it back to childhood, more often than not, our parents are teaching us to be externally motivated and externally mm -hmm. We are taught to look outside of ourselves for answers. How should I be feeling? What should I be thinking? How should I be behaving? What should I look like? What should my life look like? What should I look like as a parent? We're look, we are taught to look outside of ourselves and you know, mm -hmm. the type of parenting that is, I tell you what to do. I'll tell you how to sit. I'm going to tell you how quiet you should be or how long you should be crying. And th that type of parenting leads to a bunch of adults who are like, help, anybody help. Tell me what to do. Tell me, help mm. me. Instead of parenting, that sounds more like, what is your heart telling you right now? Do you want to go left or right? Does your tummy like potatoes or does your tummy like carrots? Which one feels better to you when you eat it? Just parenting our children to go in here and to check out how mm -hmm. our body feels, how our emotional state is, what are our urges, and being guided by that instead. Why in the world would all these new mothers suddenly start going inward for their answers? Mm. Or checking in with that bond with their baby or their children for the answers. Why would they suddenly start doing that when all they know is I get my answers from everybody else? Mm. I it's an epidemic. And mm -hmm. it, honestly, it's what I spend most of my time doing in my practice is getting people to go back to this is the answer to everything. <laughs> this is right. the answer to everything. Right. Yeah. And you're pointing to your heart and then down to your gut, really, that that's where we find the answer. Um, yeah. And, you know, what I try to tell people, because I have a profession in which people are asking me questions to, to how they do a certain thing, you know, I try my best to say, look, I'm going to give you my opinion here about what is making this so difficult or how you can make adjustments. And you're, you are the one who knows your body and your baby best. And you might decide everything I say is not going to work for you. And mm -hmm. if you do, I want to know because we can go back to the drawing board. So I'm wondering in these situations, these groups are not going away uh, where people mm -hmm. get advice on the internet um, from other people. So those of us who people, let's say we moderate a Facebook group or let's say, because I know a lot of my listeners, they're in, they're in like peer support groups because they're, they are certified peer counselors, for instance, for um, breastfeeding. So what is the, you know, because sometimes there are questions like, how do I increase my supply with a pump where you can say, hey, these are the things you can try. But sometimes it really is just someone, I think, reaching out for some sort of validation of their difficulty. Mm. So when it's not a face to face interaction, let's say somebody texts you or you're in one of these groups and somebody at says, oh my gosh, my baby wakes up every two hours still and they're eight months old. <sighs> the, what is the best? Um, what is the best way to respond to them as a whole person who has the strength within them to know what they need to do in this situation that is still supportive, like showing that, hey, I'm your friend and I'm here for you without just giving them the answer? Ugh. Yeah. Be because the truth is, it's okay. Even if you are really tuned in with yourself and you're mm -hmm. guided by yourself, there's going to be stuff you don't know and you actually need the answer to it sometimes too, right? Right. Yeah. It's okay to ask for help. And mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to say it's not okay to ask for help or to learn. Um, and also, if someone's asking you for help, I think it's important that you honor your own personality and your own style mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. me saying first be empathetic and then give them options and then tell them whatever works best for them. They need to find <laughs> maybe right. that's not your style. I'm, I, then I'm just right. doing to you what I'm telling you not to do to other people. Mm -hmm. So the way I try to do it when people ask me for advice, straight up advice, first be empathetic. So if someone says my eight month old will not sleep more than two hours at a time, I'm going to probably go, oh my gosh, <laughs> you poor, poor thing. thing. This must be I so know. hard. For you. <laughs> like, yeah. are you hallucinating? Are, when are you sleeping? Are you able to work? Like, how is life for you? So the, mm -hmm. just finding that em empathy is always like the most beautiful 
um, connecting factor, right? I know what that feels like, or man, I can actually feel what it must be like right now, Mm. starting off with that. But also couching your advice in, I've tried this, or I've heard other people have tried this, or here are some options instead of do this, Mm. do that, try this. So instead of making it a directive, it's almost like you're handing out different Mm -hmm. options. Yeah. And then I would always try to follow it up with, but at the end of the day, it's you and it's your baby. It's your family. It's your home. And you're the one in that diet. So whatever you come up with that works for your home and your family and your baby, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's the right answer. Mm -hmm. If if everybody needs to sleep in the same bed, do it. Mm -hmm. If everybody needs their own bedroom, do that. Mm -hmm. If everybody needs to sleep on the couch, okay, do that. That's fine. Whatever works for you, do that. But here are some Mm -hmm. I know about. Yeah. Yeah. That's so helpful. I have a cousin who I'm very close to and we go through very similar things with our kids. And when we most often talk by text, although we do talk on the phone pretty frequently too, but whenever one of us is complaining about something happening in our life, we have both tried to get in the habit of saying, are you just needing to get it out or are you wanting advice? So never just assuming that they're looking for advice. And sometimes we will say, oh yeah, I need your advice. And sometimes we're like, no, I'm just venting. I know what I Perfect. need to do or yeah. So, you know, I think it's great to lead with that um, with other people too. Oh man, this sounds really hard. Do you want my advice or, or do you just need to talk about it? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great habit for anyone to get into. Before you Mm. start giving out advice, always ask permission. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're being super rude. (laughs) That's just rude. And I think it's important as parents to think about this with our kids, too. We think because we are the adult and they are the child that it is our responsibility to dole out advice and what we think they should do at every turn. But like you're saying, this is how we end up with a generation of people who are turning to other people for advice all the time. Right. Yep. Now, if it's a matter of safety. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell your kid what to do. (laughs) What a a great skill to teach them. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to show you how to do that better? Mm -hmm. Would you like Mm -hmm. to would you like me to show you how I do that? Would you like my advice right now? Would that feel good to you or no? All right. Figure Mm -hmm. it out on your own then. May the gods be with you. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be watching. I know. <laughs> and in the same way that it is hard to let go, I tell my my clients all the time who have young babies, we are really not in control of them. They are already like full human beings, and we try to help. But in the end, you cannot control another human being, even when they're a baby. You cannot make them eat if they don't want to eat. For instance, you can't make a toddler eat if they don't want to eat, and so having a relationship with our kids and with other people that um, has the sense of mutual respect. It is hard when our kids are going through a difficult social situation, for instance, and either they are being hurtful to somebody else or somebody else is being hurtful to them. And we think it is our duty to tell them how to act in that situation. But honestly, sometimes they just have to get through the growing pain of dealing with that. And if they know we're on their side, even if they're in the wrong, oh, I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. I'll give you advice if you want. Let me know if you need help navigating the situation. That's a very different type of thing than saying, this is what you need to do. Oh, the underlying message there is you are so capable of doing Mm. that. You've got it in you. I know that you're even capable of totally fucking this up. And you're mm-hmm. still going to be able to figure this out. And I'm yeah. here. If you need me, but I don't think you need me. I think mm-hmm. you can do that. It's such a powerful message to send your child and other adults in your life. You don't need me to tell you how to do this. You can do this. Yeah. And I'm just, it, this just takes me back to the very first thing you said about this topic. If, can you imagine if we have, a a society of adults who, when they were children, the adults treated them like that, Mm -hmm. we would be able to go internally more um, 
when we were facing difficulty as new parents and find our internal bearing because we have always learned that we can solve our own problems and that there are people around to help us if needed. Yeah. Something else to keep in mind is our children are picking up through interception. They're picking up on mm. everything. They're not so much what you're saying. They're picking up mm -hmm. on eye contact, you know, micro movements, breath, mm -hmm. heart rate, reactions, emotions. They pick up on all of that. So mm -hmm. guess what? Your children know you, mm -hmm. the real ass you. Mm -hmm. You can try to do all the things and say the right things and be the right way and like all that. You can, you can try to do all that, but mm -hmm. their knowing is your truest, most authentic stuff. The stuff you don't even realize <laughs> you're doing, they know it. Right. So you can Forget about all the other shit. Be you. Mm -hmm. Save yourself a ton of energy. And then you'll be congruent. And the connection with your child will be even better because everything mm -hmm. will be matching what they're feeling about you and what they're picking up on you subconsciously will be matching what they're getting consciously too. That's a whole like side. <laughs> we could probably do a whole no. episode just on that. We probably could. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes me think about when I have um, parents with babies and they are feeling so tense about the feeding mm -hmm. that there is research that shows that these hormones, the stress hormones interplay between the mom and the baby. And again, it's not always helpful in the moment to say, Hey, you need to calm down because this makes feeding harder, but to help people recognize that, Hey, if you can say, you know what, we've got this, we're going to figure this out together. That helps the baby to sense in your body, mm -hmm. hey, we're going to figure this out. No, there's nothing to worry about here. My mom's got it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Feel it. Okay. And then my one last question I have for you, mm -hmm. let's say we are the person who is getting advice that we either didn't ask for, or maybe we did ask for it, but it's not, a, well, we have that internal compass that's like, eh, I don't know if that really works for me. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's our parents or somebody who really thinks that they have a right to tell us what to do now that we are a parent. Um, even a pediatrician sometimes. I've heard about pediatricians telling clients all sorts of crazy things about what they should be doing with their babies and you know, not the good ones, obviously. But um, <laughs> so how do, um, how do you help? What is your advice to people in those moments to have reground yourself and also kind of set a boundary there about the things you're willing to talk about or not willing to talk about. Do you have advice for people in the postpartum period? Cause the you, people in the postpartum yeah. period get so much unsolicited advice. Oh, constantly. It's cool. Mm -hmm. Cause you're so part of this club that you didn't know existed until you got pregnant mm -hmm. and had a baby. And then right. suddenly, it's, Oh, now I'm like part of this right. thing, which is cool. But yeah, right. all the advice that comes along with it is not cool. Mm -hmm. I think we're, so we're going to talk about two different things. One is getting unsolicited advice. I didn't want it. I don't like it when I'm getting it. Doesn't feel good to me. I need boundaries. And also this other, the other side of it is I ask for advice, but it's not sitting well with me. Mm -hmm. So in the first scenario, I'm just getting hit with advice out of nowhere from someone, parent, pediatrician, pastor, some old lady mm -hmm. at the grocery store, whatever. You have every right to say, please don't give me your advice. Mm -hmm. And you can say it however you want, whatever way feels good to you. You do not have to be nice. You can be nice if you want to, but you do not owe niceness to someone giving you unsolicited advice. Unsolicited advice is super rude. And you can meet <laughs> that person where they are at you could be rude back. I didn't ask for that. Please don't give me unsolicited advice. Mm. Or you can be very diplomatic. I appreciate you caring so much about me that you're giving me advice. I know you only want the best for me moving forward. Please don't give me advice unless I ask for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if they continue to give you unsolicited advice, you have every right to say, you know what? I asked you not to give me unsolicited advice. I'm going to have to leave the room. I'm going to have to hang up the phone now. Sorry, I can't really continue mm-hmm. this conversation. I don't like this. Okay. Clearly state what you want. I don't want your advice. If it keeps going, leave the conversations, leave the room, hang up mm-hmm. the phone. You do not need to get that. And yeah, and just a reminder, and I have to remind women a lot, you don't have to be nice about it. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> women feel mm-hmm. pressure to be nice all the time and you don't have to be. Protect your peace at all costs. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I've asked for advice. I really need advice. I need help. But the answer that I'm getting doesn't feel like it is aligning and it doesn't align, especially if you feel it like right here, like in your chest, your sternum area, you'll feel like a almost nauseous or little hit. If your feelings, it's okay for you to say, okay, I'll give that some thought. I hadn't thought about that before. I get that. Okay. I hear you. You don't necessarily need to say, I completely disagree with you or I already tried that. That's not going to work. Or if you've asked for advice, you're going to get, I I just think the nice way to go about that, because you don't want to burn that bridge either. Right. If you're asking this person for advice, it sounds like they're, they might be a watering hole that you want to go back to sometime. I'll give that some thought or, you know, perhaps I'll try that. Maybe that doesn't work for me on this thing, but I really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with me. Mm -hmm. It's okay. You don't have to, you don't have to follow advice. Yeah. The, the, you know, and I talked about this, everyone's advice is going to be from their personality, from their life experiences, from their relationship dynamics, from their education. So any advice you get is going to be very, uh, um, not skewed, but it's going to be colored to their world. Mm-hmm. And so right. you, you can always, you can ask for it if it works, if it doesn't, it's fine. Yeah. 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 And ho- it seems so common sense, but I think so many of us have trouble in the responding in a way that we feel good about. It makes me think a little bit about when I was deep in the postpartum period with my son, I had tons of difficulty with breastfeeding and I had uh, tons of difficulty with sleep. And initially when people would ask me, oh, how's he sleeping? I would um, just give it to him like, oh man, it's horrible, blah, blah, blah. And then I realized there were certain people that I just responded. It's okay. Things are fine. I would not tell them how difficult it was because I knew that the response I got from them was not going to be helpful. So then they didn't need to know, they didn't need to know more than what I wanted to tell them. Because I tend to be somebody who's like super honest with everybody. And so I had to learn, oh, you know what? This is not a person who I'm actually going to share the struggle with. Beautiful. And then with other people, I would say, oh man, this sucks. But Mm -hmm. I had to learn. I had to learn who were those safe people to be able to say when I was struggling. Yeah. Yeah. I think many of us have to learn that people have to earn our story. Mm. And, and only if someone has earned it, that they've, they've proven that they're a safe person to give your story to, the, mm. only then do you give people your story. But um, yeah, if you know someone's not going to be safe with your precious story, don't give it to them. I love that because so many people have traumatic birth experiences and traumatic um baby feeding experiences. Like you talk about this stuff. I'm steeped in this world and you hear so many people who have had such challenging experiences. And then you often hear other people say, at least you have a healthy baby. At least your child's healthy. That's, those are not safe people to tell your story to. So just don't. (laughs) No. Right. Thank you so much for sharing this really practical advice. I think it is so important for us all to be thinking, how do we support mothers in the perinatal period better? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, so, I really appreciate what you're doing for people. So needed. Mm, so thank needed. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you contributing to the conversation and adding both your personal lens and your expertise. It's so Absolutely. valuable. My honor. Totally my honor. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. I hope after listening to Rachel and hearing this conversation that that in your relationships with other people, with your partner, with your kids, and particularly with people who are new parents, 
that you can be the person who holds space for them to feel how they're feeling without having to fix how they're feeling. That we can be the people who provide the shoulder to cry on, the ear to listen, and that we have the foresight and the insight to give advice sparingly. And to also encourage them to seek out professional support if that is what they are needing in the moment, whether that be from a lactation professional or a mental health professional or a postpartum doula. We can help them get the help they need without being the person who has to provide it. If you thought this episode was helpful, share it with a friend and send them to my childbirth education course so that they can feel as prepared as possible to welcome a new baby into their life. Bye.